Because does a black stone explain that to me? But let, let him finish his point so I can then turn it against him. Yeah, let's see. Let's see if he uh, if he offers us something. Conclude that God is one. God is the most powerful and God is omniscient. Say he is Allah who is one. Allah the eternal refuge. He neither begets nor is born, nor is there to him any equivalent. Nobody with good reason and logic okay, can deduce. Pause. Mm -hmm. He said, and he's quoting chapter 112, verse 4. Mm -hmm. What did he say last part? No one is, is equivalent. No that's one is said, equivalent. Right? Yeah, that's what he said. Equivalent, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so to be the true God means you must be unlike anything in creation, right? That's that's what he's trying to say, yes. So if you're going to be unlike anything in creation, that means if his God can be likened to creation because he has a shin, <clears throat> he has a foot, he has male genitals, gonad, and he has... Two right arms. Well, to be honest, uh, he's a deformed, finite God because Bing. nothing in creation has two right hands like his God does or three eyes or more, except if you're a cyclop or maybe you're into Hinduism and you focus on the third eye. But mm -hmm. that he just argued for the truth of the Trinity because the Trinity is unlike anything in creation. Correct. Here's my challenge to all the pagans here and the Mohammedans. Show me anything in creation that's tri personal three distinct persons who exist as one being inseparably you mm -hmm. can't find it so if there's nothing equivalent to god and that's a criterion for truth there's nothing equivalent to the trinity so he just argued for the truth of the trinity i thought he's mm -hmm. trying to refute the trinity What's going right on? so I, I hope i 